Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be going through a quick tutorial for Synchro and how to link a 3D model to your schedule to create a 4D deliverable. First things first, when you open up Synchro, it's going to look something like this. It's going to have a window for your schedule, it's going to have a window for your Gantt chart, it's going to have a window for your 3D model, and then there's ones for your 3D objects and your resources and your selection tree. So there's two pieces of data that you're going to need in order to connect a model to the schedule. You're going to need a model and you're going to need a schedule. To upload a schedule or a model, you're going to go here to import and you're going to import an IFC or 3D or your schedule from a P6 or whatever software you're using. I'm going to go ahead and just load up one that I already prepared. Ooh. Okay, here we go. As explained, we have our schedule here and our different activities. And then we have our Gantt chart here. And this window is for our resources. And there's also, there's our 3D objects and here's our resources here. And then we have appearances and filters. So we'll go through those in a moment. So the basic concept of what Synchro does is pretty simple. You have your objects from your model and each of those are tied to a resource. And then you just click that resource and you tie it to an element of your schedule. And then when you're running the simulation, it'll know when to have that piece of geometry appear. So first things first, uh, navigating this model. It's not the easiest. You can click an item and it'll rotate around it. You just click the left hand mouse button. You can also use this box tool, this cube tool, like in most software that we work with, move it around that way. You can also go up to this window here, click the 3D view properties, and if you go to this last window here, you can change the way that you're viewing the model. The way you do that is you click here from examine and you can go orbit, you can choose pan, um, rotate. There's all kinds of different options. You can do walk, sometimes that's easy if you're trying to just walk through the building whatever works for you, but examine is the default, so that's what we'll be working in. Now, one thing with Synchro is when you are selecting objects, it's additive. So see how I've selected this object here? If I click it again, it'll deselect it. If I click multiple objects, I don't have to hold shift or anything. It'll just select each of them till I click off of them. Another thing that's helpful is if you're selecting multiple items, you'll notice that down here it says selected. It's three, so I have three items. If I select another one, it'll be four. That's helpful keeping track of what you're doing. And if you want to clear out and deselect, you just press escape. Another way to select is by left clicking and dragging by holding shift. It'll create this box. So a cool thing about Synchro is depending on which way you make that box, which way you drag your mouse, it'll select different things. So for example, if I hold shift and click, left click and drag from the upper right to the lower left, it will select everything, but if you'll notice, it also selects everything under the roof. Everything that was in that box all the way through, it will select. Now, if I press escape and hold shift and I grab it from the other way, it'll only sh select what's in direct view of that box. It won't select anything that's being hidden. So that's something to keep in mind. And then also if you hold shift and left click and drag, from the lower right to the upper left, it'll only select what's entirely in this box. So see, it only selected these items because they were pretty much in the box. I think there's a little room here, but didn't select anything else because it wasn't obviously within the box. So that's helpful as well. Okay, let's start assigning some items. So I have some piles under here, and I think it'll be easier if I hide these floors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift and select these. I'm gonna to go to my 3D objects tab down here. That'll show where these are in my selection tree. I'm gonna go up and actually just turn this off so it's not visible any longer. Okay, so to start assigning, say I wanna assign this roof here, it's typically best practice to move from the top down. The reason for that is if I assign this, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure my appearance is on install. We'll see why in a moment. I'll keep it on original color. And I'm going to assign this roof to my roof task. I'm going to right click and then assign selected resource. So it disappears here. And the reason for that is because see this, this red line, this is where we're at in our schedule. This is the, going to show the, the condition of the model at this point in the schedule, at least the elements that you've tagged. 
And this roof over here doesn't happen until we get all the way over here. See? So it hasn't been installed yet. Now it's been installed. Now it hasn't been installed yet. So if you keep your timeline earlier in your project, you can work your way down from the top. And as you assign objects, they'll disappear. That's usually a good way to go about it. If you make a mistake and you want to unassign your resources, you just right click and do unassign all resources. Something else that's helpful is that there's this column here that tells you how many items are assigned to any particular task. It's actually good to kind of move this next to here so it makes it a little bit easier to see. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select some of these items. I'm going to go ahead and open this level three vertical. Let's start with that. So I'm going to start clicking on some of these upper walls here. I'm going to go to level three vertical. There we go, our walls. And if you'll notice in this schedule, we have our formwork, rebar, and our pour separated. And the reason for that is we're going to make different appearance profiles to signify which phase of the construction each of these areas are in. And that's really helpful for your 4D. So we're going to right click in this window and we're going to do add. We're going to write formwork. There we go. So we're going to click our formwork appearance profile. We're going to have that be temporary and then we're going to unclick the original color and we're going to choose a color to go with the formwork so let's actually choose red there we go and then we're going to make another one and we're going to make one for formwork for rebar and for pour and cure okay so here we are i have the pour and cure i make green rebar yellow and formwork red so when it comes to these schedule items it'll for show up red yellow and then green and then go back to its original color so let's start assigning some resources we're going to click here our objects in area a walls on level three and then i'm going to go ahead and make sure my formwork property is applied and i'm going to go ahead and right click formwork and assign selected resources see how they disappeared that is because we are back here on our timeline if I move this to where the formwork comes in, it appears right there. And it'll go away afterwards, and then uh, the next one will come up, and it will turn yellow, and so forth. So you can actually assign the same resource to multiple areas. So say I am clicking this again, and I can go to Pour and Cure. Let's do Rebar. Right-click this and assign resources. Another way you could do it, is you could actually just click and select assigned resources that'll automatically select everything associated with that. Then you can go on to your next profile, right click and assign those. There we go. Now if we move this back and forth, see it turn from red, yellow, to green, and then it'll just maintain. And we just keep going with that process for the rest of the items. Move this back so that disappears and then we'll go ahead and hold shift and select all of these columns here and then we will go to our columns walls beams columns here and click our formwork and we're just going to go through the same process let's attach them here and then let's select those again go to rebar put them in rebar select again go to pour and cure and you get the picture. So now, moving through this, those come up, those come up, you get the picture. And we're going to go through to every object. Here we have our horizontal beams there. And the same thing. Beams, formwork, assign, and so forth. Now, sometimes when you drag, you're not going to catch them all, see? See how there's some left here? So sometimes you just have to go back, click them again, and then assign. There we go. Form work, clicking, assigning those as well. Now that we have everything assigned for area one, level three, we can go ahead and go through the timeline here and see it up here. And it's just the same process that I just showed you for everything else. Areas one, two, and three, and levels one, two, and three. Here we are with level three assigned. If I go through this timeline here, you can see it get built up. And there we go. We're just gonna continue with the rest of the building. Level two, 
on upwards. And there we have it. Everything's assigned. As you can see, we have our nice little 4D showing it built up through level one, two, and three, and the roof. So that is how you link items to resources to create a 4D deliverable in Synchro. Like with all the tutorials I create, I'm going to put a link in the description where you can go and get a 30-day free trial for Synchro and try it yourself. If this video was helpful, go ahead and do me a favor and hit that like button. If you want more videos like this, we'll be doing some future ones on Synchro. Obviously, we didn't go through all the functions. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you next time. If you found this video useful, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you want to learn more about BDC and BIM, then click that subscribe button and notification bell. Thanks for watching.